Hi everyone, DFIR Noob here with a video on forensic imaging. Today I want to go over how to make a forensic image. Uh, I'm going to make two videos for forensic imaging. First I wanted to go over how to make one using a GUI application. In this case we'll be using FTK Imager from Access Data. And then in the second video we'll be using a command line tool. So just to begin uh, with an explanation of what a forensic image is, it's a bit-for-bit -bit copy of a source to a destination, and in this case, a forensic image. So it would be a file um, that will have a, you know extension type associated with forensic images, and there's various files we'll discuss later. Uh, so it could be any source media. It could be a hard drive, a USB. It could be the memory from the RAM on the computer. Uh, it could be just an individual file, it could be all of the above. Uh, in many cases, we're doing an image of the whole computer or possibly a whole um, you know, mobile device. So it's everything within that device into one image. Uh, sometimes investigators are limited as to what they can image from a source media, and we'll get into that a, a little bit later. But uh, essentially imaging is just making a bit-for-bit -bit copy of a source media. So what's included in a forensic image? That includes everything including uh, you know, your files, your deleted files in a lot of cases, uh, for your file slack, which would be the leftover space where the file is stored. You know, if it doesn't fit completely into the defined sector of that hard drive, you know, there may be a leftover space um, from where that file is that could have pertinent data. Uh, to an extension of that, the partitions created within a hard drive or, or a volume may also have something called partition slack, which is also left over space within that partition that can possibly contain some some useful data. So let's get into how to create a forensic image. Before I make the forensic image, I want to make sure our light blocker is attached to the source device. Now in this example, I don't have a, a physical hardware light blocker, so in the previous video, I went over how to create a write blocker, software write blocker in the registry editor of Windows. And that's what I'll be using here. So I'm just going to pull up the registry editor. And I'm going to bring it over here. And right now it's set to zero, which is turned off. And again, you can refer to the previous video, but the write blocker I created is under the system hive, under the H key local machine. And if we just right click that, we'll modify it and set the value to 1, effectively turning it on. And then once the rate blocker is turned on, I'm going to attach two USB devices. And it's important that we turn the rate blocker on prior to attaching the devices because it doesn't retroactively apply a rate blocker if we turn the rate blocker on while the USBs are already attached. They have to be detached first. So we have two devices here. We have one on the E drive, one on the G drive. The E drive, for the purpose of this video, is going to be the source of our forensic image. Uh, I made two test text documents within this USB. It's a one gigabyte USB. And on my two gigabyte USB, I have some forensic tools. And what we'll be using here is the Access Data FTK Imager. So what I'll be doing first, I'm going to pull up the FTK Imager. So to create an image, you can either click on this Create Desk Image icon, or you can go to your file and create this image. So we have some different sources here. Now in this case, we have a physical USB attached to this machine. Uh, that's our source of the image. So we're going to choose Physical Drive. Um, what a logical drive would be, which might be a volume within the computer. Uh, but it's important to note that if you are going to do a logical drive, it may not capture all of the data. Specifically, it may not capture deleted data um, from a logical drive. So it's always, if you can, do a physical drive, will we'll capture everything within the device. All right, so we'll go to next. And then from here, we just want to drop down. Here's all the physical drives, including internal hard drives attached to this workstation, but we know that this one gigabyte is going to be our source, so we're going to click on that. And then here we want to add the image destination. So we're going to click on the add, 
and you have four different image types. Now, uh, in a separate video, the next video will be going over what a DD image is, so we're not going to use that here. But these other three images are typically used with proprietary imaging or forensic toolkits. Uh, EO1, or sometimes referred to as the expert witness image, is part of the Encase forensic toolkit. It can be used in other software command lines as well, uh, It's but it is one of the more commonly used forensic image extensions. So we're going to use the EO1 here. Case number could be whatever you want. It could be, let's say, your first case, so it's 01. Let's say you want to put today's date in there. Just to track the date that you started the image. The evidence number should be pulled from the chain of custody log, which we'll go over in a separate video. Uh, but what we could do here is we could name it, it's a USB, so it's called a USB. And let's just say there was three or four USBs obtained from an incident scene, and this happened to be the second USB, so we'll call it USB02, and that should match what's on the chain of custody log. Uh, the unique description, we could put in this, the name, maybe the make and brand, you know, it's a Sony, one gigabyte USB. Maybe put the serial number in there. Examiner could be you. For your notes, it could just be a quick descriptor of what this particular image refers to. So this could just be image of the one gigabyte USB. Okay. Now we're gonna next. So the image destination is going to be where you're going to send the forensic image. Uh, you, typically, you want to make sure that the destination media is larger than the source media. So in this case, we're just going to send it to the desktop for this purpose here. Uh, I could easily send it to the other two gigabyte USB or wherever you really desire. It's, it's again, as long as the, the, the destination is larger than the source. And we'll just call this the one gigabyte image. I don't have to put the file extension. It's going to know that I previously I, I chose the EO one as the file. Fragment size, if it's a larger source, we may want to consider fragmenting it or even compressing it. Uh, in this case, it's just a one gigabyte. 1,500 megabytes would be more than enough to capture this image in a one file for a one gigabyte device. So I'll go ahead and hit finish there. And then I just double check my work, make sure I, um, everything matches up to what I want it to be. I want to make sure that the verify images after they are created checkbox is marked. This will verify that there were no errors during the imaging process and that the source and the forensic image are a complete 100% bit for bit copy of each other. I'm going to let this run and I'll be back when the image is complete. Okay, so the imaging process has been completed, and here it'll give me some verification results. This is very important because it'll tell you that the source uh, media and the forensic image are a complete bit-for-bit -bit copy of each other. Uh, we could verify that for the hash values. So essentially what a hash value is, is it's a digital fingerprint of a piece of media. Uh, so we want these values to match completely, even if they were one uh, alphanumeric character apart, that would mean there was something not completely you know, correct. Usually, if even if you changed, like if I were to change like a period in one of the text files in the one gigabyte USB, and that was the only thing I changed, it could completely change this hash value. So it's important that these two values are completely identical because what we want to do here now is we want to work with the forensic image. We don't want to analyze or use the source media when we're analyzing evidence because we don't want to alter the evidence in any way. We want to keep that preserved so the integrity is intact and then work with the forensic image, uh, which is very important. So when we uh, discuss our findings or if anything happened to happen to the image while we were working with it, we know that at the very least that the source media, uh, the integrity remains intact, so nothing has happened to it.
what you want to do is you want to validate your forensic tool. It's a good practice. Uh, if you can use another forensic tool to also image the same source media, uh, it not only gives you a backup, but it also tells you that it should produce the same hash values. So it'll tell you that the tools are working as they should. So the bad blocks list, so there's no damage data blocks within the USB that we just made an image of. Uh, so all the information was captured from that one gigabyte USB. So that's it for the, the forensic toolkit. In the next video, we'll be going over the forensic command line tool, DD. And that will essentially do the same thing as we just did here. It'll make a bit for bit copy of a an image. And we can then use these images to mount them to our forensic tools for further analysis.